The irony of RPG Maker's marketing starting with an epic journey begins isn't lost on me when the amount of time it's taken for it to arrive could well have been novel material. But it is finally here on the Nintendo Switch. But does it do enough to earn that premium price tag? And what exactly does it do? Let's find out. The RPG Maker series has been around for a while and actually began life back in December of 1992, believe it or not. It's very popular in Japan, but historically, console versions in the Western market have been few and far between. And I believe the last one was actually on the 3DS in the Japanese market known as RPG Sukuru Fest. And I probably said that completely wrong, so I apologize. Essentially, RPG Maker starts out by offering the player a reasonably in-depth tutorial. If you've ever played an RPG Maker title, it essentially allows you to divide the world into segmented areas with different layers of item that you paint upon the world. For example, you may start with the grass upon the ground, which will come under the first category of items you'll see on the left. In the second, the next category will take the next level up, as it were, almost items that would be placed on top. And then you have the third, and the fourth will allow you certain constraints, such as where the player can and can't move. There's way more to it than this, but that's as simple as I can make it. You'll create different areas and join them through triggers that you'll place on the ground. These won't be seen by the player, but you'll have to control every single aspect. So when they enter one area, you'll tell that trigger, okay, they're gonna teleport inside the house. Now I've made a test level because really it's easier to kind of show you how it works. After painting your overworld map, which is this first area I've created, you can then customize and tweak the characters that are gonna be in your game. This one's called uh, Glenn, and he's an inventor, and he needs to head back to his house. I then created the town that Glenn grew up in, as well as his futuristic workshop. All these areas involve designating the defined space, so choosing the X and Y coordinates, and the amount of tiles these areas will take up, and then letting your creativity go, really designing the environment you want to design, and then changing the background music and any other sound effects you want to include. It's all quite simplistic once you've got to grips with it and it takes place predominantly through this main area map but also using the database section where you can tweak every single element of the game, including enemy difficulties, the types of enemies you want, their names, everything can be tweaked and then you can play your level on the fly. You simply press the start button and you can save and test and you'll have to do that quite a lot. I think the emphasis here is perseverance. You need to be someone who is willing to make a ton of mistakes, have to learn something new because I'm not going to lie, it took me a good three or four hours to get to grips with the systems. But once you've done that, RPG Maker MV is surprisingly simple. So I'd created my hub area. I wanted Glenn to go to his own little workshop and there was going to be a quest when he gets there. I've placed down those invisible markers which tell the computer to send him to the next area. You can save triggers as quick triggers for use at another time. So if you want to duplicate them and use them in more than one area, you can do that. And as you learn those tools, you realize how simple it is to do nice little things. Like on the right hand side of my town, I created a almost a backdoor entrance that led straight to the dump. And from here, there's going to be a few little side quests that you can undertake. I guess some important points to really think about are the controls. The controls are pretty decent. You use the Y button to quickly access any of the menus you can see on the screen. I would have liked perhaps a quick toggle for undoing mistakes, but also one for redoing them. This may be something that there's buried away in the menus, but it wasn't explained adequately in the tutorial. It's workable the way it is, but it's not overly practical. I have been using a keyboard because typing out all of the different dialogue as well as the names of people and places, you're going to need a keyboard and plugging any USB keyboard in will do the job. But what I did notice is I couldn't plug a mouse in. I think that's a shame. It would have been nice because the Switch does actually natively support a mouse and keyboard if the developer programs it in. Now, visually speaking, it's a very classic isometric top-down RPG style that allows the player to do quite a bit of detail. It really is up to you how you use the tiles on offer. There's lots of options for customizing the characters as mentioned, and there's a decent amount of audio options.
with several hundred musical tracks and scores, ones that are custom for different areas, and the themes you're offered allow you to create medieval, futuristic, and mix and match almost to your heart's content until you find things that work for you. RPG Maker holds a premium price tag, and you're gonna have to know in advance if you want to play this style of game. Personally, I would say go online onto any browser and type in RPG Maker. There's a free one that I've very often used in the past when I'm teaching and things like that, and it's quite similar to this. It will give you an idea if it's something you wanna pursue, and if it is, then I would say dive in. There's a lot here, but it's not for the faint-hearted, and it's gonna take a lot of your time to do it successfully. Once you've created something you're proud of, you can then upload this for the rest of the world to play, judge and enjoy. It's very simplistic, there's simply an upload screen that allows you to share a set number of your creations. You can go back and work on them at any time, tweak them, add new players, characters and areas, but the potential is there to create something truly epic in scale if you've got the vision and the creativity to do it. So, in answer to the question we ask in this small series, is it a keeper? Is it worth playing? Is it worth buying? It's an expensive title, but it does something few others do, and it does it really well. If you seriously consider making games in the future, or you just want to be inspired, it's a great way to start. But, it's very expensive. I'd say for most people, if you're not sure, then you're likely to wait for a sale or try and find the physical for cheap. Right, I need to go and finish off my RPG. I'll try and get it finished in the next few days and upload it, and I'll leave a link in the description or the top comment. Let me know down in the comments if this is one you're considering and any questions that you would like answered because I'm sure I've missed out some things. As always, a big thanks to all the new patrons. We've again had another three or four this week, which is insane, and we really appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!